My name is Heather Anderson. I want to welcome you to this presentation, Making Sense of It All. This is something that so many people seem unable to do in the world in which we all live today. Let me just share one or two things from a letter that I received recently. It's from a lady, a youngish person, I would think, and she is saying that she cannot make sense of any of it. In fact, she started her letter by saying, why are we all here? She said, this world barely seems to be habitable. The struggle is just too much and nothing seems to go well. She went on to say that whether it's her housing, whether it's education, whether it's finance, whatever the situation, nothing seems to run smoothly. And this disturbs her quite considerably because she was saying, why are we here? How are we expected to live like this? There's no help from anywhere. Nothing seems to be on our side. Everything seems to be against us. So why are we here? Because one day, when all said and done, we shall be dead. So what was it all about? That question, why are we here, is one that's echoed by so many people. And sadly today, there are so many people that don't find the answer to it. And they take their own lives. I've heard of so many young men in London, black men, who can only see hopelessness and despair ahead of them. The highest rate of death amongst young men in London is suicide. When we were in France, probably two years ago now, we met a young couple. They weren't actually a couple, they were two friends because they didn't believe in partnerships, they didn't believe in families, they didn't believe in marriage. In fact, they couldn't see any future for the world. And all they were content to do was just pass their time in the summer lying by a river in the sun, watching the river pass them, watching the river flow to the sea. There was nothing more for them. They were completely demoralized by it. During the winter, they tried to scrape out a living, enough money to get them by doing odd jobs. And this is the despair, this culture of despair that is throughout the world. So if you feel it doesn't make sense to you, you're not the only one. Nearly everybody I speak to has that same experience. But as well as that, there doesn't seem to be any order to anything. Nothing seems to be in the same shape anymore. You even have to go into a supermarket and you find they've changed everything on the shelves. You go into a store and they've altered the way they lay out the store. You go to the usual place and nothing's where you expect to find it. And it all adds up to little bits of frustration that we don't know how to cope with. In fact, there doesn't seem to be any order in any of our lives, really. It really seems as if everything is changing, bus timetables change, the day the bins go out change, even our relationships change, and there doesn't seem any solidity, no security to live on, to keep going by. And this can be a very real problem to us. When we start to think about this, we realize that our life is a kind of trap. We're caught in these frustrations. We don't know why we're caught in the frustrations. We don't seem to have any control over our lives. I was involved with a lady when I was working, a young woman, and she said to me, very sadly, she said, I wish I had a paper clip. Now, on my diary, I had paper clips with all sorts of papers attached to them. But she saw that as someone who had got their life in control, somebody who had a degree of authority in their lives and was comfortable with it. And all she wanted was a paper clip, a symbol of that. Now, the question we ask again is, why should this be? And I'm going to give you an answer. The answer to that question, why, is because we have all been taken hostage. We have all been chained up. 
here are the heavy chains, the padlock and the key. And of ourselves there is no way out of this situation. We are stuck with it. I read a story not too long ago about a hostage in the Middle East. He was actually at the end of his tour of duty. He was just going back to the airport when his car was ambushed. He was seized from the car. He was gagged and trussed, thrown in the boot and driven off at high speed. At the end of the journey, when the car finally stopped, he was thrown into an underground cell. Utterly and completely disorientated, he had no idea who he, where he was, who his captors were. There was nothing to give him any guidelines at all. And he was overwhelmed by a tremendous sense of fear. But after a day or two of food and water, he realised he was going to have to cope because he was now a hostage. He had heard those chains clanking and he knew that other hostages had been there for months and he knew that if he was going to survive he would have to develop coping strategies. He invited his friends to a, a mock birthday party. He gave imaginary lectures to people. He taught himself things by remembering his maths lessons and trying to remember things from puzzles from school. He made friends with a rat that he fed from the tiny crumbs of food that were left to him. All these things were to keep him sane. Now, isn't this how the majority of us are living? We're living by coping strategies, but we're chained up. We're not really living. Let me tell you why. We've been taken hostage by a fallen angel. That fallen angel wanted a kingdom, he wanted a territory, and he wanted subjects. And he took Adam and Eve as hostages. And I'm going to tell you more about this in the next instalment. But you see, this has not always been the case. In the beginning, God created this world. God created it very good. It was happy, it was healthy, it was holy, it was all in order, and it was peaceful, and there was joy everywhere. Blue skies and sunshine, you might say. And that is how it was until this being called Lucifer came into the world and took human beings hostage. But first of all, let me tell you a little bit about God. Today, people tend to blame God for what's happening, but he is not the one to be blamed. He was the one that made it good. Just think about it. When you used to run at school, when you did sport at school, did you not always want to do better than the previous time? When you make a cake, don't you want it to turn out better? When you decorate the house, don't you want it to look better than it was? Have you ever stopped to think why this should be? Let me tell you, it's because right at the beginning we were made perfect. And thanks to the workings of Lucifer, who became known as Satan, and who spoilt everything, we still have memories in our prison cell of good days. They're very hidden memories, but that's why each one of us has this longing to go back, to get back to something better. We all have this longing. We want to be free of the same old arguments, the same old discussions, the same old problems that we have. We long to be free from it all. And this is what God is actually offering us. But it is Satan who has taken all this away from us. Let me tell you some more about God and how we began. This world began by the wish of God and by the love of God. Everything that he made in this world he spoke. He said, let there be light and there was light. Let there be birds, and there were birds. But Adam and Eve were made specially. They were made from the soil of the ground, 
and God with his own fingers made Adam and Eve. He was the one that breathed life into them. Each one was created slightly differently, but nonetheless they were created. We have not evolved from the slime. How do I know this? Because God has given it, given us this information in his Bible. This Bible goes back a long way before the Rene scientists. This Bible, the words of this book, go back before our world was even created. And so if we're looking for something to tell us what it was all about, what happened at the beginning, this is where we have to look for that information. God is a loving God. God is a kind God. You only have to look at the names that he's given himself in the Bible. He calls himself the Good Shepherd. He calls himself our Heavenly Father. He is good to us. Had you ever thought why your heart keeps beating? How many times have your eyes blinked during the course of this presentation? Many, many times and you've done nothing about it. And you can't, you can't change it. You have to rely on God. People blame God for everything, but it's not God's fault. It was Satan who brought this into the world. It was Satan who took us hostage. And you see, we were made in the image of God, which meant we were holy people. We could praise God. We could worship God. We too were creative. And we still have little bits of creative thinking in our hearts and lives today. But God was a creator. And this is how he made us. The thing that we have to remember is that Satan tries to destroy everything. Satan is working to devour us, the Bible tells us, like a roaring lion. And why is this? It's because Satan hates us so much. He hates us because we're made in the image of God. And he wants us to destroy anything that reminds him of God so that he can have his own way with his angels because a third of the angels followed Satan and were cast out of heaven. He sees this as his territory. So today when you look around you and you see all the struggles in the world, the war, the bloodshed, the battles, your own personal difficulties, it's all because you have an enemy who has taken you hostage. So there you are. You've already had one or two explanations of why you have the situation that you have in your life today and why you long for something better. The next instalment will tell you about the one who comes to pay the ransom because every hostage needs a next of kin. And so next time I shall tell you about the next of kin. There is a way out and knowing there's a next of kin you've probably already guessed that Satan is time limited in what he's doing. God bless you. Good. Sure.